hi guys very good morning to you uh, this is Ajay and uh, in this video video number 220 uh, we are going to talk about the uh, do loop uh, how to run the do loop and we are going to have the basic understanding on the do loop and uh, this is going to be the part 5 uh, recently we have started a series on the loops uh, especially after having a lot of emails from you guys that you know you really want to actually have a basic understanding on the loops so uh, in this video this is what exactly we are going to do uh, if you are new to my channel please go to this playlist on my channel and you you see that here we have created all the videos we have you know basically put in all these videos under the specific categories based on the content which we have discussed in all these videos so here you can have a videos on excel excel vba ms access and ms access vba so based on the subject line whatever you're looking forward to just click on that and you can you know have a look on all those videos the videos which we have started that is extremely going to be available on the playlist under uh, under the playlist excel uh, vba loops right so you can see here that this is exactly we have uploaded 13 videos here and uh, these are all the videos which you can watch but don't forget to watch these videos uh, part 1 part 2 part 3 and part 4 is also another which I'm going to just upload uh, this is the part 5 video and we have started talking about the four next loops I have covered three parts of this for next loop and in this video we are going to talk about the do loop which is another form of the uh, you know the VBA which is another form of the loop which we use in VBA a lot so again this is going to be a very very uh, basic loop we are going to uh, because we need the understanding on the do loops so guys uh, here I have a question for you and you know this is what exactly through this question we're going to understand that how we can use the do loop now for example uh, here what we are I'm going to write here a couple of numbers here let's say uh, 33 44 55 and then I write here 77 and 22 and let's say this one 24 75 right now what we need to do is um, I want to run a loop on this B B column and I want but I want to having a condition I want to run this loop on B uh, provided that as long as I have the values in the column A so anywhere it sees the blank column it stops and it should not print the value here right this is exactly what I actually need to do so uh, let's say now you can I mean give it um, you can uh, think of any example because this is just the basics and for the basics we really don't have to take you know pick up any real example we can simply do one thing why don't we go ahead and you know print some num uh, print some value here maybe let's say uh, we can print here um, uh, let's say Excel right so how are we going to do that so it first goes to this a1 and checks whether it is empty if it is empty it should not it should it should immediately you know run out of the loop and it should go to the end term it should exit from the you know the macro it should actually uh, stop the macro it should stop the loop uh, but yes as long as we are going to see some values here you know it keeps on printing the value so this is what exactly we are going to do in this video so let's go ahead in the developer tab this is how you you know uh, select the developer tab in order to go to the visual basic if you don't see this developer tab then please go to your file and in the files just click on the options I'm using the Excel 2016 but I know in 2013 and 2010 the option is available on these you know the, the exactly on this customer ribbon where you need to select this option developer tab if you don't have this you know as check mark then you need to check mark it and the, the moment you check mark it you're going to click on the ok and you will be able to see your developer tab right which is very important for this visual basic environment otherwise you can also use the shortcut key which is alt f11 right let me just write it alt f11 actually takes you directly to the visual basic window so if i press alt f11 this is where exactly it is going to take me right so here i'm going to insert the new module and in the new module we are going to write this program so let's go ahead and let's discuss this program so i'm going to write here print excel and this is the program which we are going to write now let me just close this we don't really need it now in my previous video in my part 4 also I have talked about the do loop how do you write the do loop so basically what you need to write is you need to write the do while and then you write the condition here okay condition any condition or criteria whatever you want to call it so criteria given here right and the moment you press enter obviously this is going to generate the error because criteria given here is not a VBS syntax and the, you know you write here the loop so whatever the uh, whatever things you will write here you know that keeps on executing so your code goes here so the VBA code is going to be executed again and again repeat repeatedly it is going to be executed till the time this criteria is not going to be you know uh, in the false 
it, it is not going to have a false condition right so as long as the criteria meets it keeps on running this code so let's go ahead and let's do this now now do while is a vba keyword you cannot write it any other form right you will have to write it and you will you will have to write it exactly like this just remember this point and loop word always comes with the do while if you if you're not going to use the loop word then vba will give you the error i'm going to show you um, a little later but right now first of all the focus has to be in the criteria so what the criteria is so my criteria is that you know the cell should not be empty right so the cell should not be empty but at the same time we also have a one more thing that the cell should keep on changing as well because we are not going to really put the criteria only on the a1 cell it should keep on moving you know so while i'm on the b2 the cell should look at the a2 and it should do the comparison that whether we have a value in the a2 or not and if the value is not there then obviously you know the loop should stop so how we're going to do this so let us first of all do one thing um let us write here uh that do active cell dot value is not equals to blank okay now this is what you can do so this begins now the moment i have written this uh, you know syntax you see that those um, the color of this line exactly changed right so this is now complete it looks like a vba code because active cell dot value is uh, you know it's a vba syntax now you have put in the condition here so before we start um, i'm going to be on the sheet four this is um, i'm going to write here sheet four select and the first cell which is going to be you know used in this is going to be the a1 cell so that you know we we should come here right so that this becomes the active cell which is the a1 now the next time what we want to do so if the active cell is not empty if it has some value let it be a text value let it be alphanumeric or number whatever right but it should not be empty it should not be blank so what we are going to we are supposed to do so we are supposed to do now i can write it in a number of ways now you see uh, we can write it like this a range and then b and then one dot value it should be equals to what it should be equals to excel this is what exactly we want to print out right so now what will happen uh, the first condition the first time when you're going to run this obviously this is 33 which is not blank you will have the excel you know printed over here let's go ahead and uh, you know run the loop so to run the loop i'm not going to press f5 i'm again telling you guys that whenever you work on the loops don't press f5 and if you want to have the idea why i'm telling you that uh, then go ahead and watch the previous video the part number four where i have talked that you know how sometimes what happens when you immediately click on the run or the f5 you know use the loop who is in the infinite mode if the condition is going to meet every time then what will happen obviously you will not be able to uh, you know uh, get some output out of that code and the code will run on the infinite mode so it's always you know suggested that when you're working on the loops work cautiously and uh, always keep one thing in my mind that you know you're always supposed to use the f8 key before you actually really you know uh, comes to this the conclusion that all right so the now the loop is working perfect and it is ready to share with the your audience right so right now we're going to press on the f8 and there we go now you see that i'm already on the a1 cell and this is what exactly i'm going to get from the active cell value which is 33 so 33 is not empty so definitely the loop will go here and it will print the excel and now the next time what will happen this is exactly i was talking about you see that I, you, I keep on pressing F8 and this loop will never end. Why? Because your active cell will always hold a value which is 33. You are not moving your loop. So eventually what is happening, your loop is going to be in the continuous form and the moment you press F5, it will hang, right? It, it will never stop. So the idea is basically uh, we not only want to go to the B1, uh, you know, only the V1, but we also want to go to the B2, B3, B4. So let's do one thing. Why don't we go ahead and just change this to, you know, we can concatenate this with let's say a variable called J right and here we're going to declare the variable j as well so i'm going to declare here the variable called dim j as integer right and i'm going to start j with one so that the row number this when b is going to be concatenated with j then it becomes b1 and we should have a value in the b1 and the next time you know before it goes to the loop part it is going to take this value which is going to be j plus j equals to j plus one so the next time the j will have a new value called two and then b and two when they are going to join obviously you know you're going to see that b2 so this is fine now now what is the next thing we want to do the next thing we want to do at the same time now let me first run this you know why don't we run this and let's have a look on this all right so there we go let's run this code now you see that i'm all, all on the a1 cell now on the a1 i'm going to start this code and uh, j is my once then that is going to be joined with the b and it, it is going to make this b1 right so in the range b1 i got the value excel because active cell was not empty 
right it it had it has some value so that is why it printed now the next time j is going to be 2 right so the next time now again you see that your active cell value is still 33 which is not empty so if it is still 33 then that means in the b2 cell because now j is 2 so you're going to have the x cell so you keep on running this loop again this is the endless loop you know you see that this is not going to stop at all why because your active cell is always 33 you're not moving your active cell so if you're not moving your active cell you know your comparison will always be false uh, uh, um, it will always be true and if it is going to be true then this line you know we keep on executing the this line again and again so now what we need to do is let's just go ahead and reset the code and let's just um, delete this so here now what we are going to do is at the same time when you're incrementing the value of the j very much important for us to you know uh, move this active cell also so we are going to write here active cell dot offset and uh, row offset how many rows we need to offset obviously one and on the same column so you just write here select now what happens to have a have a look on the code so let's just run this code now there we go now you see that i'm on the a1 so in the a1 the value is 33 and this is going to be j is going to be one so it makes b1 so we have a value in the b1 because 33 we have a value here now j is incremented by two and active cell is going to move now look at this this line active cell dot offset one comma zero has moved this cell to this a2 we have talked about this VBA syntax in the previous videos as well but you know altogether it was a different example now the next time when the loop is going to run now have a look on this now the value is not 33 and this is what exactly i was talking about it is 44 so you just, you just run this loop again and in the next time you will have a value called here excel again and then again the cell is going to move and this time we have a value 55 which is not empty so here in the range b3 because j is 3 it is going to print again one more excel and uh, then it is going to move now this time it would be very interesting to see now you see that we are on the b for a4 and it is absolutely empty it doesn't have any value so now have a look over here now active cell is empty which means that this empty is not equals to this empty which is not true because both are empty right this is what exactly we have given the condition so now what will happen the this then part which we have written you know this is the true part which we have written this is not going to be executed and if i press f8 look have a look look at this it immediately you know skip this loop part and the loop stopped so this is how you make your do while loops right you put the criteria there and this is how you execute them now criteria could be anything that depends upon the situation we just actually wanted to have the understanding on this right now if you if you are if you if you have watched my previous videos as well where we have talked about the for next uh, you know the loops now now you would understand what is the difference between for next loop and do loop you know so basically the difference is that in the do loop we go by the condition but in the for next we really don't go by the condition we set up the things we set up the things like you know how many times you are supposed to run the loop right we are supposed to run the loop 10 times we are supposed to run the loop 100 times 200 times but in the do loop we always provide the criteria you can't say that you know run this loop here 10 times you don't see here you know that kind of a syntax it is always on the you know based on the criteria so as long as the criteria is meeting you know your loop will run and it keeps on executing the same syntax again and again with different values obviously right so this is the uh, end of this do while video and uh, if you if you are watching my channel for the first time guys i have already shared the playlist with you you have the access to all the 218 19 amazing videos and uh, if you are a excel lover excel vba lover ms access ms access we may want to get you know some good videos you want to have the some understanding on that just go ahead and you know watch all those playlists so i will be back with the uh, another video um in in you know in the uh, continuation of all these uh, loop series and uh, do subscribe to the channel the link is just on the right corner on the right bottom corner and uh, i'll see you soon then thank you so much guys bye bye